Hi all, today I'm showing you how to make our family's chicken and dumpling recipe. It's from the 1820s, our great, great, great grandmother. It's very good. Equipment and ingredients you'll need. A liquid measuring cup and two spatulas. A one cup measuring cup. A large stock pot. A ladle. A pair of tongs, a fine mesh strainer, a fine mesh spider strainer, a stand mixer, a mixing bowl and rolling pin, a six quart Dutch oven, measuring spoons, a whole chicken, a large onion, three egg yolks, one cup of milk, three tablespoons of Crisco or lard, three cups of pastry flour or all-purpose flour, two stalks of celery, one carrot, and salt to taste. First up, I rinse out the chicken and then I put it in the stock pot and I put just enough water to cover the chicken. You don't need to peel the celery or the carrots, just rinse them off, make sure there's no dirt, and put them in the stock pot. I always take the peel off the onion, but don't do much more than that. I need the root on it and cut it in half. And now I put it on the stove for three hours over a medium-high heat. Put the lid on, and you can just go about other things you need to do and time to make the dumplings. We make our dumplings a little different. Some people do a very moist drop biscuit into the boiling broth. We don't do that. We do um, a roll out egg dumpling. And usually I would use white lily all purpose flour, but I'm out so I'm just using um, pastry flour which is uh, comes from a, a soft winter wheat as well, and it will be very tender. The biscuits were super delicious, but I do prefer white lily. And normally I would use lard, um, but I have no lard to use, so I'm going to use Crisco, which is just as acceptable. Once I feel like the lard or, or Crisco has been mixed through, I just lightly beat the eggs up and then I put them into the mix and let it go. Now I, need to it. I should have been using um, the dough hook um, immediately after I felt the Crisco was mixed together. I should have switched out, but I, I didn't, I forgot. And so then I had to do it. And it wasn't that big of a deal, but I always use the dough hook um, when you're gonna put in the egg and milk because it will, it's too much for just the paddle. And the dough is incredibly soft right now and easy to roll out, but I wanna make sure there's always flour on the bottom of whatever you're rolling it out on, or it will stick. You don't want them to stick, that's not good. So you can see my handprints, it's such a soft, soft dough. It's so incredible. It's so delicious in the broth. Oh my gosh, can't even tell you how, how yummy it is. So I'm just rolling them out. I'm gonna, um, I'm just making sure there's nothing on there. It's smooth. And I'm gonna start cutting them out. And I just do strips. And um, I dust them as I go along with flour because of course, the flour has two purposes. Uh, one, it's making sure things don't stick together other dumplings don't stick to each other or the table and also uh, it's going to thicken up the broth and that's what we really want we want a thicker broth I think I'm, I may have mentioned this before but it's going to be the consistency of like a heavy whipping cream um, the broth if you're finding that it's not done that you can also add a little bit of flour I would say two tablespoons of flour and just sprinkle it on top of the broth and mix it in. 
and you can break up any kind of lumps with the back of a spatula. But usually um, having them dusted with the flour is enough to thicken it to that consistency because we're gonna do a slow um, soft boil uh, once the dumplings do go in. I always put them on a plate afterwards. And I've checked back now, it's three hours later, and the chicken is falling off the bone, so I'm gonna take everything out of the stock pot, even the chicken, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna use my um, fine mesh spider strainer to get up any um, chicken debris that's in there. And what I'm really looking for is sometimes when a chicken's boiling, the blood will come off and little like little specks of, of cooked blood. Now that's perfectly fine, it's delicious, it's not anything wrong with it. But for aesthetically pleasing, I like to remove that. And so I have a, actually a two-step part. <laughs> I uh, take everything out, I strain it, and then I strain it again. And I pour it off into my uh, Dutch oven to make sure that I have everything out. So I want it to be really pretty, uh, a beautiful presentation. That's what I'm looking for. I'm sure our great grandmas didn't do this, but this is <laughs> it's just me, um, 21st century Kate. And I've drained it off. And now I'm gonna work on the chicken that I pulled out. And I'm just gonna um, tear them into pieces. And I'm also removing the bone out of there to make sure there's no bones because they can float off because they're boiling such a long time to extract all of the goodness from the bones into the broth. And um, you don't want those little bones in there. And what's left is uh, the dog's treat or the cat's treat, whoever you choose. And I'm putting it back into the pot and making sure there's gonna be large and small pieces of chicken. My mom prefers the dark meat. I don't care, it's all good to me. <laughs> it's all tasty. And now I'm gonna take off the excess fat that's come off the chicken. Um, because we're boiling it in water, the whole chicken, the skin of the chicken is gonna release a lot of its fat. And some fat is great because that's its flavor, but you don't want so much that it's like you're getting a mouthful or a spoonful <laughs> of chicken fat. So now I'm putting the dumplings in and do not, again, shake off the excess flour because you want it to be the consistency of a heavy whipping cream at the end. And now it's been brought up back up to a boil, a soft boil. And I'm just doing a very essential taste test just to make sure it's delicious, which it was, <laughs> of course. And I'm gonna add some pepper to taste. My mom loves pepper on everything. I mean everything. She asked me to <laughs> ask for the pepper for the meatloaf. I don't care what I'm making. She's like, can I have pepper? So I always put some in. And I'm just gonna do a soft boil for 15 minutes, and this is gonna help um, thicken it up as, as well, more. And this is what it looks like. It's so delicious, it's, especially when you're not feeling well, it's great. So this is the final product. If you make it, I guarantee you, you're gonna love it too. I have been posting videos every day, and I'll be doing it until April 28th, and then I'm gonna go back to three times a week. We ask that you please like, subscribe, and comment. It does help our channel grow because the YouTube algorithm can find us and send us to other people. I wanna thank you all for stopping by and watching one of our videos. We're so grateful to have your time. I know everybody's busy, so we are grateful, and we hope you have a very blessed day. Thank you again.